Hi. Everyone. This is your Okay, I'll stop that. <laughs> DC Gong and DC Fu. Now, welcome everyone uh, from our lineage and also from the Teenage Dragons YouTube channel because, you know, this is open for the public. And so, yeah, you guys on YouTube will watch it later after the live session right here. And we're doing it on Skype. So I'm recording the whole session. And if you are ordained, you will be also able to join the Skype session as long as we still have the uh, seat right here because I believe they have a maximum of like 25 people. And so, yeah, anyway, <laughs> as long as we still have space, you can still join and participate. So what do you do if you participate? Ask question, okay? Yeah, so you can ask question. And... So, as usual, we will start the session by having some Q&A. So, okay, we have... I know that's ugly, but anyway. <laughs> we have some Q&A first, and then we'll get into the main topic today. Now, the main topic today is very exciting and very, 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 very related to everyone who, you know, you just ordained or you just initiated, and you have these kind of questions like... Uh, how do I know I have magic power and what do I do to get more magic power, you know, or, or something like that. Uh, or, or like, how does the, the God give this power to us and things like that. You know, these, these questions are going to be answered today. And also, for the more advanced disciple, you will learn about the deeper side of uh, the full head, some full work, and, you know, the cultivation uh, theory and things like that. So... Now, oh, my clock is right sharp on 11 o'clock. And welcome, officially, everyone, to the school session. So let's begin by having some Q&A. Uh, we'll start. So uh, let's go. Question? Okay, first question is from Tin Feng. She says, uh, I would like to learn more about the Tai Ching anniversary that is coming up. What should disciples do to prepare and celebrate? Yeah, okay, very smart. <laughs> That's also one thing I forgot to talk about, but I meant to talk about. So great, the Tai Ching anniversary is on the lunar second month, uh, lunar 15th. So that's basically next weekend. And well, to celebrate, just like all anniversaries for the gods and things, you would need to, let, well, let's say someone's birthday. Okay, what do you do? Well, you connect to them, give them a phone call, send them a letter, you know, give a gift or uh, some kind of offerings and things like that, you know, to show your appreciation. Now, on your altar, if you have altar, you can directly burn incense to the Tai Ching Dou Dap Tin Ju, you know, you can say the Tai Chong Ou Guan, okay? So you can burn incense and recite his uh, uh, spell, uh, or you can just burn incense and say that this is for Tai uh, Chong Lu Guan. And then, you uh, can burn that form that we prepare, which basically is like uh, like a birthday card. You know, you have your message there. And um, you can also have your offerings, uh, offerings, food offerings. You know, put stuff up like as if you have someone, uh, like, you know, their, their birthday, you want to buy some stuff for them, right? So put some stuff there that can represent uh, your um, heart. So, yeah, talking about this, okay, this, this week is a very special week. This week, we have been having some special training in the upper level about, like, food upload. And this is very fun because, like, food upload, most people think, okay, like, human. Uh, well, I, I need to, like, really, uh, you know, like, cook something very big and tasty no, like lasagna, you know, wow, like huge pot of stuff. And yeah, like most people think it's like that. So when you serve it to the altar, you need to like be huge. It needs to be like super tasty. But then, you know, the look of it is just food. Okay. What's so special? Now, now if you want to offer something for the God, there are more advanced ways to do it. And that is 
conveying the message through the dish that you're creating. And it could be as simple as, you know, just rice and some other things and combine to like a piece of art. <laughs> it could be like as simple as like you use egg and some other things and combine to some simple things, but then it look very like different. You know, it look like a message that you're trying to tell someone. And that is what the God needs to see, your heart. The time and energy you put into making the dish and also the heart, the intention. And also what is energy anyway, right? Time and energy. Energy is here. When you put more thinking, more thought into it. How do you put thought? Well, it's like this. Um, I'm going to put like, uh, let's say, I'm going to make a, a, a dish that represents, you know, my heart for the Thai thing, right? I want to represent my heart. So one point, one point of energy. I make the dish a heart shape, okay? Okay, now the second point is I want to show that my heart is very strong. So I, I use beef, so a heart-shaped beef, like a stick. Okay, that's two points. Now what else, right? I want to add some more. Like I want to add some broccoli to represent this. I want to add a tomato here to represent this. You know, like <coughs> that. So eventually you got a dish that is like very um, complex with a lot of thought put into every single little bit that represents what you want to say. And basically that is the, the, the value inside that dish. It's not just like an ordinary food, you know. It's not for, you know, the God don't eat your food like physically. <laughs> you know, they just do that. So what they do is they look at the thing that you created and feel the thoughts inside. Like, you know, you, uh, think about someone who is about to die already and they are like on their deathbed and then they cannot really eat, right? So you buy something over, they look at that and they already feel better. Why? Because they look at it, they feel the heart inside your food. So it's not about like how much food there is. It's not like, oh, I got like a whole table, you know, family feast kind of style. It's not like that. It has to be something that represents your heart and you have to have your thought. Why are you using that? Why? How can you convey your message? That's the art insight. You know, start thinking about that, okay? Your uppers will come down and teach you guys about these things later on and give you examples. So stay tuned, okay? There will be teaching. But anyway, uh, next question. Sigong 其實是你的靈魂是未正式完全地歸位 最重要的一件事就是不要太長,是的,就是立刻呢,你起身飛到幾不舒服都好,OK,即刻個人呢反轉,你反轉個人呢,即係你平時你要面朝天啊嘛,反轉,OK,跟住呢,跪喺度,即
誒食完早餐先練功啊嘛，係咪？咁啊，同埋咧最緊要咧就係唔好誒你嗰啲睡衣啊，唔好成日翻著。睡衣咧著一日咧，第二日咧就洗咗佢，跟住就著第二套。咁啊，唔好著同一樣嘅衫咧就瞓覺。咁因為點解咧？你嗰啲人咧瞓覺嘅時候黐住嗰啲唔好嗰啲能量喺度。誒、啊、排毒咁樣樣排曬啲嘢出嚟 ，OK 嗰啲唔好嘅邪又排出嚟，跟住喺個身上面黐到啲衫度，你第二又著翻落去，咁啊係咯，誒想唔死都難啊！咁啊呢啲係好多人都有嘅壞習慣，或者有啲人咧直頭戇居就係即係覺得有件睡袍，咁啊成日咧都著翻嗰件睡袍，十年如一日咁樣好似唔使洗咁樣，咁其實嗰件嘢就係好污糟噶嘛，即係你嗰啲唔好嗰啲遺氣黐曬上去，咁啊黐曬上去之後，你你又唔處理佢喎，係咪？咁啊，攋嘢啦，所以呢啲咧就係要洗嘅 ，OK， 每日記得換啊換衫，咁啊就係咁啦 ，OK，one more question，one more question，English。Okay, this one is from Tin Ha. She says, 施工吉祥 ，I see sometimes we have updated food and other and other things. Where do they come from, and do the old ones expire or become less effective, and why? Okay, 啊、uh,。That's a good question. It's also related to the lecture today, but we might as well talk about it. So, where does the whole Sam Law and Gung and all the stuff from our lineage come from? It's not me who created it. I am the one that write it down. Okay, I have my Sifu as well, right? <laughs> my teacher, and my teacher is not the human in this world. They are in an other world, right? But we talk to them. So basically, like the, the easy way to say it is, you can say, well. You get your teachings from God, and God gave you the teaching to copy it down and use it. Well, it's not like updated. It's more like you learn new things, and、uh, it's like you know you have your school note, right? Your year one, year two, and then you keep going, and then you know, eventually your your note gets better and refined and more detailed and things like that. The old one, well, it's not that they expire because you can still use them. The thing is, just you choose to not use them. And、why? Well, because you have the new one, why do you use the old one, right? <laughs> so yeah,、um, think about it. You know, like your 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 phone. You got a new phone. Why do you still use your old phone? I mean, move on. <laughs> well, move on because there are more good stuff ahead, right? So you move on. You don't have to look back.、Uh, what are you missing? Why are you still like you know you have your old phone? Why are you still touching the old phone? Oh well, because I have this program. You can install the program in the new phone, right? <laughs> so you don't need to stick on to the old one.、Uh, everything you need, you will have in the new one, right? So you don't need to stick on to the old one.、Um, well, yeah, basically that's that's how it works. And also sometimes,、um, like in our lineage, right? There are,、uh, for example, like sometimes, okay, there are like bad di disciples that might have.、Um, Been in the lineage and they got kicked out and things like that and then, well, eventually, you know, these people they 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 came in and they learned certain amount of things, right? Now they're gone and after a while, after a while they're gone,、um, everything can an update and then well, eventually it's like they cannot even know what's in the lineage anymore. So it's kind of cool that the uppers are doing that because it's basically also a layer of security as well. And the funny thing is, if you are in the real upper level,、uh, you will know like all the mechanics behind, and basically, like only the outside kind of change. You know, they get kind of touched up, but the inside and everything still remains the same, and nothing is actually changing. But it's more like you know, you change the packaging, but the <laughs> you know, like food, right? You change the packaging, but the inside is still the same rice. And、uh, if you understand the real thing inside, you will realize, oh, it's the, it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That's that's how it works. Okay. But、uh, for the outsiders,、uh, it's more like you know they they won't even get it because you don't know the inside stuff. Yeah. Well,、uh, it also relates to the the lecture today that I'm going to talk about, which talked about how God pass on its stuff to you and. Like after you get ordained and initiated, why? Like how your power, you know, got transmitted to you and things like that. So we'll get onto that right now and let's start the main lecture. Okay. Okay. So starting the main lecture, we're going to talk about 
energy. Okay, and oh, what happened? Energy. Okay, talking about energy, I am going to borrow a physics thing right here. I don't know if you understand this, but okay, this is some this is some science stuff with the pendulum theory. Okay. So imagine this line is the same height, okay? But the science will say that when you bring the ball, okay, up to here, and then you release it without like giving it a push, right? They say at this point, it already has X amount of potential energy. And potential energy, right? So it just sounds like energy as well, right? So most people, they think, oh, energy. You need to like, you know, like I, I have this thing here. I need to charge it up. So to charge it up, you need to go like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, most people are thinking like that. You need to do something, you know, to charge it up. Come on. But no, it, the, the physics teacher, you know, they just take the ball and then they, they hold it right here. And they say, this is now with X amount of energy. <laughs> you look at them, you're like, hey, come on, you didn't do anything. <laughs> you just bring the ball up over there. Yes, okay? By putting the ball at a certain position, it already has that energy inside. When you release it, what happened? Well, everyone can take a guess, right? The ball goes swing over here, and then they boom, and so if you basically have a board or something here, the ball is gonna wreck the board. Okay? That's how you destroy things. And then, boom! You guys play Angry Birds? <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, so, yeah, you know, like slingshot. And then release. It goes, right? You know, everything is like that. To charge up something, you really don't need to, like, put it there and then go. <laughs> at that movie kind of charging. So. When you ordain, you're kind of like that, you know? You're kind of like that. I put you in a certain position from your neutral state, which is right here, okay? I put you at a certain position, which is right here. I put you as a, now you're like in this position as a disciple at a certain level. This is your level. Your level allows you to travel all the way from over there and all the way to here, and bang, that you have the potential energy. Because you are at that location, at that position, actually, not location, you have the potential energy. When you actually move, right, move, like when I let go, and then, you know, the ball swings, and then you will unleash the potential energy to do whatever thing. It's just like, okay, you enter the lineage, you're at here, okay, the X point. And then when I say, okay, I let you go, and then you now have the email, and you got your heart spell and all that stuff, right? When you start using the stuff, when you start using your heart spell, using your full head and the magic and everything, when you start moving, right, you are going to swing, you are going to unleash, and that power is coming out. Hey, you see? I don't need to keep going like, <laughs> I don't need to do that. As long as I put you there, and then there you go. Huh. So everyone entered the lineage, you know, right away, because you're at that position, you already is charged up with a certain amount of energy. And this energy is what? This energy is the magic power. The magic power of what? The magic power of the Tao, the, the God, you know, right here. You know, the God, the Tao, you know, put its power into you. And that is done by granting you that access card. The access card is what? Is your heart spell. Your heart spell is basically like the password. When you say your heart spell and you execute you know, whatever magic according to your need, you're like dialing that, that passcode and opening your account and then say, I want to use my juice, you know? And then, well, there you go. 
Okay? Now, the thing is, like a pendulum, it's kind of funny, eh? Bring it up, swing, and then take that, take that, right? Like that. And the thing is, eventually it could stop. You know, like the more you use it, the more it like slow down, and then it just kind of stop, right? How do you charge it up again? You need to bring it up again, <laughs> right? The thing is, if there's something that keep pushing you back, then it, you know, you keep having that momentum, and you will keep going. How do you keep going? How how do you get that feedback? Oh, did I just say the keyword? Yeah, feedback. Okay, so it's like here, if there's a wall or something that you know it doesn't break. If it breaks, it ate your impact and it's gone, right? So, yeah. Well, you need to make sure that this thing is something that can hit you back hard enough. And then it goes back here, and then, you know, it gives you that push, and you can keep going and going and going and going like that. When you use your magic every day, you start to feel the impact and, the, you know, the, the, the influence how that thing actually works in your life. You have problems, you use the magic and you solve problems and then it helps you and you feel the changes, right? Everyone in the lineage who is actually really learning, you should know. When you have this and that problem, you use it and you feel different and you see the effect and such, that is what keeps your pendulum going. Rocking back and forth, right? It push you back. But the thing is, you know, in physics, uh, the theory, and also that's how it works, is that if you keep the ball at this level and you don't give it a push, you just release and then it go like that, like that, right? It's not going to go further than what this line is, okay? So this line is the maximum that your ball can swing because, you know, you're not giving it that initial force, you know, that push, if you, if you like go here and then you kind of lift it up a bit and then you uh, like that and then the ball is going to swing higher, right? You need some forces, some kind of power that kind of gives you that kick, you know, initial kick. And that initial kick is very important, you know, like when you swim, you kind of push your leg against the wall and you can jet yourself forward, right? And kind of like that. So here... It's like that too. You need something stronger than yourself to give you that kick in order for you to create a greater impact and also a, a greater feedback that actually make you swing back harder and that's what gives you the improvement and keep you going and get you stronger. How do you get that? Well, you have this here, which is X point, right? How about we say there's another stage or another line right here that's called Y point. Now, that is that's very mathematic here, you know. You know, writing in X and Y makes me very professional. Next week, I need to wear that, like, white robe. <laughs> and now I'm going to look better. Huh? And, and the thicker glasses. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> so, yeah. Someone at the Y point, you know, they pull you up. Now you're above where you are. Who is that and what is that? How, how is that done? Well, someone who is higher than you, you know, like, for example, your uppers. Your uppers can give you a, a, a hand, you know, they can give you something. This something is, for example, like a full head. Full head, what is a full head? Uh, full head basically is like a piece of paper, and we have a symbol, you know, like that, and that fool, right? So you burn this thing into the bowl and you add water and you drink it. When you drink the upper's full head, it's like they are pulling you up and then they go, and then now you can go further. That's basically the, the base idea that you need to understand. You cannot drink your own full head to get higher than what you already is. You need the upper's to do that. You need the uppers to bring you up. And that's why you should request the full head from your uppers. Or else you're not going to get anywhere by just trying to eat your own full head and consume your own level power. 
Now talking about that, full head is the next subject. Okay? Full heads. Piece of paper with a symbol inside, like this one. Okay. Ah, what is that now? Oh, that's a full head. Oh, cool. What is a full head? <laughs> full head is like a full, right? It's just like a full. Yeah. It's a full. But what is it? Well, we've got to explain it this way. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, there's a god. Ta-da. Uh, you pretend that it's a god, la. okay, like this, la, a god, okay, so, oh, we got some eyes, okay, so we got a <laughs> god right there, okay, ah, <clears throat> so this god, whatever you name it, it got a full head, I mean, it got a signature, right, okay, so, you know, it got a seat, Let's say it's signature, okay? We're going to pretend. We're going to use the letter B of a circle. This is like the logo of the god, okay? It's the B god, right? <clears throat> the logo or the signature. Okay. So we have the big B right here. Now, in order to get the god to pass on his power to you, you need to use the full head to connect. So there are three stages in the full head cultivation to make it actually work. First stage. Second stage. Third stage. Okay, let's go through these. The first stage is the yum stage, negative. What is negative, huh? Negative is not bad. Negative means what? In our dictionary. Negative is absorbing, intaking, accumulating, consuming. That's, that's negative. Eating food is negative. You know, the food gets consumed inside you. Consuming the light. So to consume the God power into yourself, Converting the God's light, the God's goodies, convert, make note everyone, convert the essence into energy. That's the first thing you do, convert essence into energy. How do you do that? Well, in the cultivation, Okay, don't worry guys, I'm going to repeat that later in the official document. So, yeah, um, it's the first stage, right? You take a bowl of water, okay? You do the heart spell, you connect to the God, and then you take the heart spell power, and then you start writing the full head with the spell. There's a spell inside, okay? So as you write the B word, there's a spell going on. It's like a password, and you need to match the shape, and you need to match the sound, you know, everything like that, okay? So you need to match everything, right? So you keep drawing that full head into the water, and you're drawing it 49 times and continue doing that. Okay, as you do that, you're converting essence into energy. You are channeling the God's power down and with your thinking, your thoughts, and putting it into the water. As you do that, the water, that, that bowl of water, is connected to the God. The God will, you know, know that you're connecting. And then you drink that water, and you sit, and you let it soak into you. And basically, the essence from the God goes through your heart, and then deploy to the water, and you drink it so it blends with your soul. Now your soul is charged up with that energy. Your soul is being charged up by the God's essence. And because of that, the inside of you now contains more that kind of 
particles of the God. Okay? Does it do anything? No, it didn't do anything yet. Okay? Just like you hold the ball up, it didn't do anything. Okay? You need to release it. Hey, talking about releasing, the next one is yang, positive. So it's like, okay, now the first stage is like, I keep telling you, you know, how to go to school, how to walk. You will walk through this and then see that. You'll walk through this street and you'll see that. You turn left and then you see that. And eventually you get like very, very, very kind of familiar, but you really hasn't walked yet, right? So you get more and more familiar with the way how to walk to school, but you still haven't really go and walk there. The second stage is you're gonna walk. You're gonna keep walking back and forth, right? So to do that, what do you do? Well, here is the method. You take, uh, like you sit every day at uh, the same time, and then you're gonna like sit there, <coughs> use the paper, uh, your special pen and brush, and then you're gonna connect to the God by using your heart spell, okay? After the heart spell, you're going to take that pen or brush and you keep writing the full head. As you write it down, black and white, okay, 108 times, after all that is done, all that energy that is inside you is being output to what? To power because you write it down solidly, will project it onto the paper. So this one, you convert energy to power. And then you send it off, you burn them. So after you burn all these things, where does it go? Well, this B diagram or B full head, it's from that God. So you burn it and it disappears from this world. It track all the way back to the God. It goes back to the God. So you're sending all that stuff back to the God. It's like you're projecting, right? First you charge it up and then now you project. Everything project back to the God. And well, the God get your message and the God also get that you are submitting all these. These are your head. And the God also understand you are here to tell me that you're connecting to me. And I acknowledge you over a certain amount of days because that's the agreement, okay? The God knows, okay, you pass the first step, which is basically a test for your commitment as well, to see if you're real. Are you willing to commit? Are you qualified? You see, like many people are like, oh, I believe you. Well, yeah, but I don't believe you. <laughs> so you're gonna show yourself so that the God is gonna believe you, right? If the God don't believe you, why do the God want to help you? So you're showing your commitment to the God and the God is like, okay, now after 108 days and the 49 days and all that, okay, you have completed sending me X amount of packages. And that's our basic agreement. You can do more, okay? But basically that's the minimum. So after all that is done, the God got your packages and say, okay, now I agree that you are qualified to be getting my stuff, my teaching. So now the next stage is this. This is a sign of change. What does it mean? It's a transaction. It's not one-sided, not just from yourself. Now this one, you need to have the altar, you need to open the altar, you need to connect to that God and then you need to do what we call a tick fool. You write the full head now, not on the white paper. You write one of the full head on the full paper, officially writing it like a fool and stamping it. And then you're gonna tick it. When you tick the fool, the God is there to witness and also to say, okay, I agree to give you this power. 
right? And then you burn it and drink it. After you drink it, you sit down and then you tell the God, okay, that I'm here to accept your power and your teachings. And then you sit and you let the God transmit its power and teachings to you. While you sit down, wait for like 20 minutes or so, you're allowing the God's power to go into you and pass on its goodies to you. And because of that, you drink and you, you let it go into you, well, you get your upgrades. Ah, so that's basically how you can get the God's power and his teachings and all that into you. Now, what's the difference and how will it show with the God's teaching inside you and so on? Well, if you have the God stuff inside you, let's say, okay, now, this month, you need a new job, right? And you often, you know, pray to the God and tell the God that I need a job and so on, okay? And you request it for help a lot. The God have a lot of help that he can give you. But then they are stored, you know, into a little folder. This folder has your name on it. Okay? And this connects to you. How can you get that folder? Well, you need to drink the full head related to the God. When you drink it, you allow the God to like put those stuff into that folder and the folder into you. Uh, you're opening up that folder and grabbing the goodies inside. Once you grab that goodies inside, what happens? Well, after drinking the full head, well, let's say you want a job, right? You might have new ideas. You might have new uh, things that bang into you and let you realize that there's an opening right here, there's a job opportunity right here, and so on and so on. Wow, so many new things. And because of that, you will have a new job. <laughs> so, yeah, it could happen that way. And also, it could lead you to like say, why don't you have a job right now? Oh, I don't know. Uh, after you drink the full head, you might know. You might realize that I'm missing something. Or I am lacking something. Or maybe I just, you know, I send the resume out, but the resume have some problem. And so on. It leads you to see your own problems and let you make way to make that thing happen. God's teachings are very natural. To the point that you don't realize because it's not like someone actually, you know, standing beside you and talking to you and then make you uh, listen to something new. It's not like that. But it often turns into like it will be like a self-realization or improving your observing ability or it will make you suddenly have a greater vision that lets you see something differently great vision like what like suddenly you realize that you know this friend is actually not good to stick with this friend is actually a leech and the, the friend is actually making you like taking advantage of me because of my Costco membership or whatever shit and then you realize that you detach away from that you get a better life well without the God actually helping you you might you might still realize it but it may take longer, right? So, yeah, even like one week faster, you get one week of time more on your job search or your whatever things, right? So it still help. That's how the God help us. You know, help you have better wisdom, better um, vision, and so you can see life different. Ha! Huh. Now, also, talking more technically about the magic, the magic power, okay? Let's say you're more into the, the side with like, oh, you know, I'm being attacked by evil crap and or someone cursed me or someone put evil magic on me and I want to fight back. Okay, sure. Let's say you're more advanced in the lineage, right? You know your fool and all that stuff and you're going to like use it and do exorcism for yourself and you're going to like you know deal with the e-crab and you're going to drink the food why 
you just did your exorcism and then it worked for this day and then instantly it came back again. It could be the other side is fighting again, you know, they're revenging. It could be your magic actually is not that powerful. Because you did something and it came back and it came back and it came back again. Well, obviously, you're not strong enough to total the other side. Your magic power is actually not strong enough. How to improve that? Bring the full head. Yeah. All right? Cultivate and have the full head. Consume. The God has its, you can say like, pay out. Okay? Every month. Based on your performance, your behavior, and so on in the lineage, the God has it pay out for you. You know, like you are a uh, uh, a citizen of a place. Every month, the government hand out a little bit of money, as long as you behave and stay within the country. And if you're doing good, you might get a little bit more. Who knows, right? <laughs> But by consuming the full head, you're getting that package into you. So every month, you have a certain amount of like magic power being given to you every month. Okay? But because of the full head, okay, you can consume it and you can take it and put it into your body. What happens if, uh, if I don't tick that? So eventually, if you don't tick that for a while, the God is like, oh, you, you don't want it, then I stop giving. And sooner or later, you know, even worse, you don't want your account. <laughs> like, I have this folder here, you know, like the U UPS. They open a box for you, right, the P.O. box, and you don't use it. Eventually, it's going to get closed, and they, they discard everything inside. You don't need it anymore, right? So yeah, it's so important, everyone, you know, to cultivate and make and consume your full head because every month you want to tell the God that I am serious. I'm here and I'm here to take my paychecks. Every month, every God that connects to you has their payout for you. And you want to get that because when you do other magic, that's the resources that it's going to be used. You know, when you're doing other magic, it's not just that you do the magic and it works. You need the essence. You need these things in order for them to have things to burn on. Doing magic is like riding a car. These are like your gasoline. You need the resources, okay? Now, the thing is, a lot of disciples, they enter the lineage, and then they slack off, and they are like, okay, I entered, I practiced the heart spell, and that's it, you know, like, okay. Heart spell is just dialing the passcode, you know, but it's not really going to get you there. You want to show the God you want their payout? Come on, you need to commit first. First of all, learn their full head properly. The full head, you know, you need to draw them nicely, you need to put the spell in nicely. Everything needs to be correct. Fine-tuned QC, you know, quality check. And then eventually your full head is qualified. Then you go through the official uh, cultivation. And then there you go. You're going to get that power. So, yeah, there are nine basic nine full head in total. And if you only know one or two, you're missing out the other seven. So let's say, you know, if in general you have like ninety dollars, you only you're you're only taking like ten or twenty, because you don't even know that uh, you have the other boxes out there that you're not opening up. Just ordaining, just initiating doesn't do you anything. It brings you up to here, you know, but if you don't get the higher power. To level you up to get you that initial kick and eventually you see yourself dying out you're gonna like swing and then you're gonna go up to about the same level come back weaker go and then eventually you're gonna stop at a point where you're not motivated to cultivate or learn anymore why 
because you have not done anything to motivate yourself. You have not done anything to get that higher power to pull you up and give you that starting initial starting power and then swing you out there harder. Right? That's basically how the full head cultivation works. And everyone in the lineage, remember, learn the full head as soon as possible and so that you can actually get on the real training. It does take commitment. It does take dedication. It is hard work. But hey, come on. If you are the God and you have a bunch of like precious gem, precious power, are you going to give it to just, you know, anyone? Okay, like, yeah, you trust me, but I don't trust you. I don't know you. So you prove yourself to me, and I give you the gem, you know, like that. So being a disciple, you got to understand that just because you are initiated, just because you're in a samlo stage or samlo stage, it doesn't mean anything yet. You have not commit enough to the God, then you're not getting that stuff. The God is not going to pass on that stuff to you. Even you learn the magic, you do the magic. It's not getting that power at the back because they are not giving you that power. Right? It's not just yourself practicing the magic yourself. It's what's behind the magic. Magic is like the gun. You know, they, the God gives you the bullet, and the bullet can pack up with more gunpowder for more power. You got to understand how important it is to learn all the full heads well, and also to go through the cultivation to get it official and get that power inherit. It's so important, right? So get on with learning the full head properly and make sure you practice daily and all these things are going to translate to showing the God your commitment. You might have committed more than you have had in the past for other things but the God has their own standard and you might have not reached the standard yet according to the God standard. Well, yeah, because they have something very precious. They don't want to give it just to anyone who is goofing around, right? If you have a company and you have a bunch of money, you want to hire people who can actually do the job, right? Not just here to drink coffee every day. So are you going to give your precious money to just anyone? Of course not. So today the essence of this lecture is understanding that to have the power from the gods, you need to show commitment, actual commitment. The commitment that meet the God's standard and not your standard. Don't whine about, oh, I did so much already. Okay, cry baby, go home and get lost. Talism, talis magic, is for people who really want to touch this out of this world power. You want that power, show your commitment. Everyone in the upper level, including me, have to go through this. And it's not just me, it's not just this lineage. You look at martial arts, okay? You look at the amount of commitment people put into that stuff to become a proper instructor level. How many hours do they spend? What is the standard they put in their work? What is enough? Nothing is enough. You know, like dancers. You know, dancers on the stage. They dance and dance and they do a lot of spins and rolls every day and they train hours after hours and they fall down and they come back and do more. If you cannot stand it, get lost. You know? That's how it is. You look at policemen, military, 
in order to become a real policeman, you can have a lot of power. And, well, in order to become one, you have to go through a lot of harsh training, right? To show that you're worth it. Simple. Talus magic, this power is powerful. It can change a lot of things in your life and in people's life out there. And if you are going to possess this power, you got to show that you're not just like a school kid who is here to goof around and you cannot take some harshness. Your uppers in the lineage takes a lot of harshness. They get scolded. They get pushed. Their buttons get pressed every weekend and every week. Yeah, we push them to the very extreme limit to make sure that they can live up to the standard, the standard of our God in this lineage, the standard of Samlo. We are not those who just look at like, oh, you pay some money, get a cert, and you're a talus now. Congratulations, take some pictures and go home and show off. We are not that type. Here, we are strict because we don't want to insult our God by telling people that, you know, we know these stuff, but, you know, we cannot even do some basic training like that, right? Come on. You know, look outside the other religion. Even believers pray like five times a day, you know, and look at the commitment they have. Look at the commitment you have. Can you match their believer level of commitment? and you're crying about some practices, well, eventually, you know, I, I, I see that and in the history of this lineage. These people who cannot stand some harshness in life get lost. They're going to get out of the lineage soon, and they're not going to make it. The lineage welcome people who have courage and the willpower to say, I want to really learn this stuff. Even being a chef, you know, it's not easy. You cook and cook and cook off day after day and your wrist get hurt, your elbow get hurt. Normal, right? But why do you think being in the lineage is like, you know, I do 15 minutes a day and that's it, right? It's not going to get you anywhere. People learn piano and they sit there, you know, like this girl, grade six, learning piano. She glue her ass on the piano chair four hours a day practicing just to pass that written exam. Six years old, right? Learning piano. Now convert that into learning Taoism. Doing full head for four hours a day. What is that? Nothing, right? Are you crying about doing full head four hours a day? Come on, huh? Look at this six years old. The mother and the father is scolding her and telling her to keep going because you need to pass the test you need to practice more, four hours a day, keep going, full head, you know, like that. <laughs> Come on, adults, you know, look at these people, six, grade six, grade seven, or even younger. Hours and hours drilling in front of the piano. Why can't you drill in front of the altar? Doing your full heads and all that stuff, right? Okay, anyway, enough said, let's get back to some Q&A, and now... Uh, we will talk more about the full head inside the line. Okay, so yeah, let's go. Some question. Okay, from Ting Kim, he says, Sigong Ga Cheng, I remember in an older video you were talking about the white, black, and yellow magic. Could you tell us more about them? Okay, uh, well, that's basically like a category, right? So white, okay, is like the D1, we say. Well, basically, it's the positive. So you're like outputting things for others to accept. So it's like you're adding things onto other people. Black magic is you're taking away things from other people, right? Like black magic, like you suck away things. It doesn't need to be bad. It's just like sucking away. I can suck away the garbage. I can suck away your bad stuff, right? Like if you have a lot of accident and stuff right there, I can suck away the bad energy and you won't have accident again. But the white magic is like you put something new on on top. It's like uh, they have, you know, like now they have such a good luck. I'm going to put something new. I'm going to put some 
bad guys into their life, and suddenly they have a lot of bad luck, you know, new stuff. So why the black magic doesn't really have to do with good or bad? It's basically plus or minus. And yellow is the D5, which is to change. So basically, you have something happen right now, I changed it. Exorcism is kind of yellow. You have crap right there, I'm going to change it. I'm going to change your luck and change your obstacle into something else that's not going to hurt you anymore. Neutralize it. Okay? So yellow is change. And so you have like add-on, minus, and changing. That's basically how it works. Okay? Next question. Uh 照顧你,給你給你精神時間,心機給你 就是對你的父母一樣,有這個心的 你令到你的老小的心裏面是知道你是這樣的呢那你不是真的要飲得了 即是他,比如說送禮啊,或者有張卡啊,或者有些實物他會收了,然後他收了之後就會這樣子了。就是很俗地說<笑> 所以我們道士修德 哎呀,我好感激,我真的很喜歡你,你給我五元,就是添香油 
夾埋兩個施工，咁即係要幾多錢落樓啊？咁你大約嗰個價錢你識得去做借啦。咁你做借嘅時候個心意就啊，咁我大約都即係同施工地出去食咗餐飯啊，跟住計埋好似譬如話啊，又車錢啦，又成日你諗啊諗啊好多嘢啊嘛。咁啊大約咁多錢啦，咁啊咁你你收到嘅時候都會 feel 到啊，即係佢佢都起碼每個月。所以同我出去食翻餐飯去去借屍嘅咁樣，有個心喺度啊嘛，係咪啊？因為每個月俾五蚊咁樣買，即係我就講出嚟啊，都去咗啲有錢啊嘛。咁你都根本都唔迷路嘅，你講幾多都冇用啊！即係個人啊，唔係話現實定唔現實啦，係你實質上就係個人內同埋外係根本就唔相符啊！嚇，表裏如一啊嘛，你冇理由一邊就話你好好好好愛好性，跟住。啊！實質上你同人哋食餐飯都冇嘅呢個感情咁啊，即係你俾人哋睇到要做出嚟，咁所以咧，你呢啲即係其實講真，你大中細夾埋耐咗之後咧，就俾人哋心裏有條數，咁人哋心裏對你嗰條數，咪就係個陰德咯啊！你肯付出幾多啊？咁啊，人哋咪知咯。你你個神都係咁㗎，啊！你你個神你好日都唔擺啲嘢上個壇去供奉下嘅。咁人哋都知道，誒、hey, 你都唔係路嘅，你係咪？好簡單啫嘛。咁啊，個神係咪真係要食你啲嘢？唔係，但係咁你有冇擺到咧？就係、是、另一回事啦。啊，你有擺上嚟，咁人哋睇到啊，即係你我唔係食嘅，但係咁我都 feel 到你嘅心意啊嘛，係咪？食食係食你嘅心意啊嘛，啊就係咁啦。Okay, so basically that that's such a great question. Ah,、uh, I should talk about that next week maybe. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about the virtue, the tuck, but、um, we get into some good talk right there.、Uh, anyway, so time's up for today.、Uh, the last minute, actually, is right on time. So,、um, so that's it for today, and stay tuned for、um, the next episode, which is next week. And、uh, remember to come back with more questions. So, if you still have questions that you really want to ask,、uh, and You cannot wait. Ask them online. You know, go online, ask them, and we'll come down and answer the question. Anyway, we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining. And for the, those of you on YouTube, make sure you visit pinyatdragon.com right here. Okay, and、uh, you can get initiated or ordained to there and get learning and join our line and such, or even join this Skype session live next week. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Remember to subscribe and like. Bye bye.